Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha. In this video, I wanted to walk through a couple different back-tested strategies. That's the exact same strategy, but for different ticker symbols. I thought this was helpful because I'm going through this right now where I'm trying to find a different strategy that I want to trade that is shorter duration. So probably not zero DT or one DT, but something shorter in duration, not 30, 40, 50, 60 days out. And so I was running some back tests, found a good strategy or what looked like a good strategy for IWM. And so here's the strategy. This is kind of like the baseline one that I eventually got to after doing lots of different testing. And so what I was coming up with was, okay, how you know does this strategy perform one? And then could I do this on a portfolio of tickers? So I personally like to trade a portfolio of tickers. I won't put all of my tickers in one basket, one, not, not all of my eggs in one basket. So I like to trade a diversified set of as many uncorrelated tickers as possible. Um, so this one was an interesting one. It basically is a setup in IWM where you're trading just a weekly position. If you can get into the position weekly, you're doing just one contract. Started with a small allocation for each ticker symbol, but also if you have a small account, it might work out for you too that way. It's targeting about the 10 day to expiration option. So that doesn't mean it's gonna hit 10 days. It just means it's roughly 10 days. So it could be nine days, could be 12 days, somewhere around 10 days. And then for long and short legs, we basically did the 15 and the five. So these are really, really far out positions. So this iron condor, even though it's short duration, it's very, very far out on the deltas. That means that we're probably taking, you know, like when we have a loss, it's gonna be a bigger loss on the position. And when we have a profit, it's gonna be a smaller profit. I did include some very simple entry and exit criteria. So for entry criteria, I said anything in the VIX, it doesn't really matter but I said the underlying's IV has to be above 20. So try to filter out kind of those low low level VIX or IV rank levels for a ticker. So if it had no IV rank or really, really low IV rank, then it didn't do anything. And you can see like periods in here, um, like for a couple months here back in October, 2020, it, it really didn't do anything. It didn't enter new positions between that time period. So kind of stayed, stayed stagnant, didn't just have held capital basically. Uh, it said that you could get into max positions 10 at any one time. It looks like from the capital usage stats from the back test, it really never got to that point. So even though we gave it $5,000, the capital usage never got to $5,000. It probably got to, you know, at most about 20, $25,000 or 20, 25% of that amount. So it really wasn't using a lot of capital, even if we said, hey, look, you could use $5,000 of capital, right? And then as far as exit options go, we tested profit taking, or what I basically come up with after a lot of different versions of testing this was profit taking around 30% and exiting the position one day from expiration. Now it's important to note in this case, because it is a 10 day to expiration option. Some of these tests, you actually saw the duration a little bit shorter. Some were closer to 10 days. So sometimes you did have to hold it most of the time um, on average, at least for this one for 675 trades the average duration or how many how many days you were actually holding was actually five, probably mostly because you were taking money off the table a little bit earlier. So other things I liked about this one before I started testing it on other symbols is I did like that it had obviously a good win rate, not too high. I mean, actually maybe a little bit too high, it probably looks a little bit too high. Maybe you could do some other tests around 35, 40% profit taking, maybe bring that win rate down just a little bit. Um, because when you looked at the, the average win, that you had the average win was about $24. The average loss, again, this is just one contract was $110. So you still ended up doing okay, but if you wanted to bring up that average win, then you might wanna take more profit, wait for a bigger profit, might reduce your win rate just a little bit, but maybe you take a little bit more um, off the table. So um, the win rate was pretty good. Also really liked the profit factor on this. The drawdown seemed reasonable. Probably went through a number of drawdowns where you were doing negative 14%, but the profit factor looked pretty good. So you're putting in a dollar, getting out a dollar, dollar 44. Visually, just looking at the graph here, you can see it did go through periods where it was not really a stellar performer and kind of felt like it traded mostly sideways. So back in late 2009, back to uh, about 2012, traded pretty much sideways, pretty much from here until here um, in this time period as well. So this is like mid 2020 from 2017, it was really a dud between this range. Now, I think this is important personally because I think if you visually see times like this, we have often referred to this as the long dark night of trading strategy sometimes, 
But this is what happens is you get into a strategy, you might have started the strategy literally on this day or at this time, and you look at it and you're like, okay, historically, this thing looks really good, right? So from that day backwards, it looks like an absolute killer. And, and it was from that day backwards. But then you get into this long night and dark night of the strategy where it may not work exactly the way that you want, but you gotta have that long-term perspective. So that's why I always like running these tests very, very long-term because nothing five days, six days, seven days, two months, even two years really makes a big difference until you go out much further in time. So I always like to look at those you know, visually so you can see those. Okay, so what I did then is once I had that test, and I'll just show you just what I did here, you can do it on your own if you want to, is I took this back test and then I was just super curious to does this potentially hold out true on most of the other, other tickers that I would trade such that I would throw it into a basket, uh, like a bot of all these different tickers trading at the same time. So in this case, all you would do is just, just go here, create a new back test. You just swap out the ticker, change it to whatever ticker you wanted to you know, trade this on. I don't know, like OIH. Um, I didn't run it on OIH, but maybe you want to run it on OIH. You run the back test and then that starts populating the results. So what we did is, um, and I'll let OIH run as we're doing this here, but I went in and I re-ran this. This was the original one down here. So this was that one. I re-ran this on all these tickers. So EEM, TLT, GLD, SPY, XLU, FXI, XRT, and XOP. Now, generally across the board, it seemed to work pretty well. Um, it didn't didn't seem to be a terrible one. Like if you would run some of these back tests, if you find one and then you start running it across other tickers and you start expanding out the strategy, you'll find that it just tanks across the board sometimes, right? And you get a bunch of tickers where it doesn't work at all or even remotely close. And so the one you were looking at might have been the outlier. But here, it looks like really the only major outlier was this one, XLU. And I'm not too concerned about that one. It, you know, sometimes it's actually okay to add a strategy that, um, you know, sometimes, I think we've talked about this on podcasts before, but sometimes if you do add two independent strategies, symbols, whatever, that independent by themselves are losers, negative capital returns, the combination of adding those to a portfolio actually could generate a positive expected outcome because one, one zigs, the other zags, et cetera. That's the whole, you know, rhyme and reason of diversification and using uncorrelated assets together. So, so I'm not too concerned necessarily that this one, um, you know, ended up being a downer. It could have ended at a down, down move. It could have, you know, done something like that. The P uh, profit factor for that one was a little bit lower. So maybe you try to go in and add some trend or some other filters to XLU in particular, and maybe try to get that one back up. But the other ones actually seemed pretty decent. So you had some other ones that. Uh, seemed like they did good. FXI seemed to do okay. XRT went through some pretty big moves, but ended up well too. Same thing with SPY, went through some pretty big moves, but ended up doing doing okay here. So this is SPY. You can see SPY just absolutely annihilated the strategy, obviously, during COVID, and um, but has recovered since then pretty quickly. A um, lot more capital usage be going on here in SPY. Same thing generally with FXI, FX, or, uh, sorry, XRT. XRT just got basically annihilated during COVID. <laughs> like the rug got pulled there. Uh, but then it actually fought back pretty well and um, has been on a, a pretty nice little winning streak. I think it's gone on quite the winning streak here since then. So again, it's it's one of those things where you could potentially you know run some of these back to back and together and the combination of them might end up doing okay. So if you put some of these together like the, maybe these ones, kind of compare and contrast them together. You can see some are zigging when the other ones are zagging, uh, which is good. So like right here, you see that, let me get this off the screen. There you go. You can see right here, like when this one's starting to go up, this one maybe is coming back down a little bit. They both kind of correlated here at this super correlation event. Uh, but at the same time, when uh, say like some of these ones are, are going down, you have this one that's going up. So this is kind of that, that balancing act that you kind of get by using a diversified set of tickers. So um, this is just one I just wanted to share. I just want to share the, the details of, you know, what I thought was pretty interesting that you could take a strategy and then start really testing it across different tickers. Um, I don't think a lot of people do this enough. I think they should. Um, I think that sometimes we uh, as traders or some traders get sucked into one particular back test and they're like, that's the one, that's it. Then, then they run it on that symbol and they don't really stress test it across multiple environments different securities, different underlyings, different symbols. I think if you did that more often, you might find that 
maybe you have a good test or have a good idea, um, or maybe that one that you were looking at just didn't work out too well when you start expanding it out to other symbols. So I think it's helpful. Hopefully it is. If you thought it was helpful today, just let me know. Um, I'll be building out the spot and running it some more and doing some more testing. And of course, once I'm ready to go, I'll share it in the community. You can take a look at it, make your own modified version. Until next time, happy trading.